Hi everyone, welcome to the second of this year's spring webinars. This one is running earlier than we usually do in the UK so that we can catch up with our colleagues in China at the end of their working day. We've got a great lineup for you today of contributors who we've asked to help us explore building how we develop the creative relationships in China. I'm Sarah Baines, the Chief uh, Executive of the Creative Garden, a consultancy and coaching company which is based in London. I'm also the Deputy Chair of the CMC Advisory Board. Today, we are going to talk for about 90 minutes, and we've got a great range of speakers from production houses, platforms, and distributors. But before we go to, do, to that, I've got a little bit of housekeeping. First, I'd like to thank the very many varied sponsors that are supporting today's webinar. The whole webinar season and CMC itself in July have been generously supported by our patron sponsors. And they are Akamar Films, BBC Children's, CITV, Milkshake on Channel 5, NBC Universal, Nickelodeon, and Sony's Pop and Tiny Pop, Strawberry Blonde TV, The Elf Factory, and YouTube Kids. So today's webinar and tomorrow morning's marketing meeting are supported by longtime CMC partner, the UK Department of International Trade with the financial support coming from both the department in London, the London office, and the UK embassy in China. The department supports the international outreach that we'll, uh, that we'll pursue at CMC, and there are people here in the session today who can advise you on working in or with China. In particular, we, we have Tony Humphreys, the DIT sector specialist, and Fran Fu, the team and the team in Beijing and Shanghai offices in, in DIT China. Darren's going to be posting their uh, email contacts in the chat right now in case anybody wants to seek out their advice. And I do advise that, that you uh, ha have a chat with them if you're thinking of going and working in China. So today's webinar has also been supported by one of our partner organizations, Open Beijing. Open Beijing is the agency charged with delivering Beijing's new two-zone policy, which opens up Beijing to international investment. They're particularly keen to attract educational and cultural content providers, animation production studios, and related media businesses to Beijing, and there are a range of initiatives. So there's a three minute video on YouTube, which explains this in, in much more detail. And it's well worth a watch to find out more about how, how you can get involved. So Darren is posting the link to that in the chat right now. And maybe if you want to download that link for later and take a look. To sum up, a big thank you to all our supporters and to all of you for joining us today to get to know more about China you can join in. We're open to questions. We have a Q&A that, that we'll do. Simply use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we'll get to as many as we can in the roundtable discussion at the end. But post them whenever you want and we'll come back to them later. So this whole webinar will be available to view on the CMC China Connect website or on the CMC YouTube channel by tomorrow. And if you haven't already subscribed to that, you really should. Uh, and there's going to be new content going up all the time, as well as being able to look back at previous content. So once again, Darren is putting the link in the, in the um, chat. So again, if you want to take a note of that and watch it later. Let's get down to business. Who would have thought it was a year ago today that we were a month into our first UK lockdown and we'd already ramped up our first virtual event, China Connect. Today, we host the, the second of our bigger China Connects. And what's it's even more important this year, where we've had a whole year of not being able to visit, not being able to go and talk to people. One of the key words this year around the markets is about relationship and keeping those relationships and the dialogue open while we can't go and visit. And it's much harder working and the whole system has changed. So 
today is about understanding what's happening and helping us navigate through all the challenges of the past year. We're particularly focusing today on working, what's working creatively in such an important market. We're going to find out from our eight guests who come from a range of sectors, how that creative process is working, what they're doing and how they get the nub of what's working for their Chinese audience, as well as what works for the Chinese audience and how you can take that out internationally onto the international stage. So the agenda for today, so that you all know what we're going to be doing, is first we've got our speakers who's going to talk about their companies and, and their viewpoint on what they're doing and give us an insight into that. And then in the last half hour or so, we're going to talk about, um, going to come together in a round table and discuss what they've been saying and particularly looking at their insights around co-production and uh, what's happening for the Chinese child and what they're looking for. We're going to have Jean Dong, who's going to talk about uh, what's happening in the world uh, in China and what's happening with Chinese and young people. We've got two of, of the biggest streamers. We've got uh, Li Jie Liu from Tencent and Ching Fei Zhu from ICE, who are going to give their perspectives of what they're doing. Jian Lu uh, from Shanghai Motion Magic Digital Entertainment Shanghai Media Group is going to look at co-production as well as talking about what they're doing in the marketplace. We're going to hear from different companies about what's working creatively. Man Man Chen from We Kids, Fambo, also known as Eddie from You Young, and Alicia Lu from Singing Grass, um, Trevor Lai from Up Studios and Lulu Hansen from Amazing Zebra are all going to give us very different viewpoints. So we'll get a very strong flavor of what's happening now. And if you've got any questions, again, on creativity, do put them in the chat uh, and the Q&A and we'll try and bring them together in that final section. So I'm going to ask if we can bring Jean Dong to the stage and start proceedings off, she is going to paint us a picture of the landscape in China so that we really get to understand more about what's happening. Jean, over to you. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here again uh, this year. And um, I, I'm here to share with you um, a landscape and overview of the China media market and, um, and especially animation world as uh, what's working, what's happening, and some of our advice on um, how to work with Chinese partners and what they are looking for. And of course, ourselves, what we're looking for. A bit about Zespa Media. We are a creative and licensing agency specializing in bringing UK and international content to China. And we work with, uh, with, with, with such creators and rights owners to help commercialize them in China, working with local partners in various sectors from TV and VOD uh, platforms to uh, commercial partners from publishing gaming to merchandise, etc. So our clients include the Agatha Christie Limited and over 20 international content creative um, uh, 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 IP. As So we work with them to put together local licensing deals, co-development and co-production deals. And we have our own production houses in China and the UK. So we, um, especially in China, we produce primetime entertainment shows as well as children's program for national broadcasters from TV to VOD. So to begin with, I would like to share with you the uh, some facts and figures about China and, and in, in terms of uh, children's market and media market. So um, some of these figures I've shared last year and, and, and these are still up to date because there, there hasn't been new figures coming out, but these are quite relevant and accurate. So um, it has to be said, the two child policy has really um, increased the number of babies born in China uh, since uh, 2016. Um, so and the, uh, so the figures showing that by end of 2019 there were uh, newborns of 17.5 million. So and the, the, uh, there are more being born, <laughs> and um, 
So, um, and also the government is, I think they're, 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 they're encouraging people to have more babies. So, but whether the families can afford to have them is another matter because bringing up children is costly business. Um, so by 2025, it's estimated that children between age um, zero to six will reach 100 million. And, um, and a higher age group of seven to 14 will reach 172 million. So staggering figures, huge market. Um, so in, in turn, the consumer market for children in China um, is growing quickly and there's no sign of it being stalled even due to COVID. Um, so the annual growth, well, since the um, uh, 2018, where the, uh, the annual value was uh, approximately over 500 billion pounds, it's still growing year and year um, by the rate of 20%. The, uh, in terms of the media market and the core uh, digital content industry for children in China, uh, uh, about three years ago, was um, 26 billion. Um, and such, such content in the digital market, including reading, uh, uh, you know, audiobooks, digital music, audio content, animation, and gaming. Sorry about the typo there. Um, so, and uh, the latest figure shows in last year, 2020, there were over 370 domestically produced animation series being released and that totaling um, over 100,000 hours. And that's in 2020 alone. Um, here's a bit of uh, facts about the top children channels, TV channels in China and their market share. So these are the TV or tr uh, traditional children TV channels in China that um, we need to know. Um, so first CCTV children, uh, it's a bit like CBBs. Um, and second is um, uh, Any World and the Hunan. Uh, it's um, in China, these, um, the broadcasters, especially the TV world, they belong to local provincial uh, broadcasting system or network, as we understood more in the American concept. So these are the children channel under that local um, uh, local broadcasting system. So so these so they are that's their jurisdiction. So Hunan TV, Beijing TV. So their children channel are the ones who are um, in the leading positions in China, and in turn Shanghai, of course, and Jiangsu and Guangdong, of course. So these are the top TV channels we need to make note of. And next, these are the online platforms, which uh, in my opinion are more popular because you know you can watch repeats, you can have more interaction. So they have uh, very robust subscription um, groups and, and they are growing uh, still. Um, so these are all quite good figures, hundreds of millions um, of, um, of monthly active users. So Tencent, Aichi, and Yuku, these are the top three. And a bit about the latest uh, facts and figures, the most viewed animation series in the last year, um, I, we found that Peppa Pig has already become almost a kind of an index for how successful a platform or channel is. So, so here, as you can see, they're viewed by, by billions. So that's how robust the viewing figures are for these platforms. So over here, you can see Mango TV, who's ranked number four, is also quite, uh, quite, quite popular in China as well. And Mango TV is under Hunan TV broadcasting system. So what's popular right now? Um, we looked at the league table in terms of ratings on across all TV channels, all uh, video platforms, uh, VODs, and these are the top ones. And number one by far is Peppa Pig. And again, the viewing, the viewing figures are in tens of billions and it's still going strong. So yeah, th this is the champion of champions right now. And there are always new content coming out. And as you can see from this uh, picture we shared, they do have some local content as well. And over here is Peppa Pig singing Chinese New Year songs. And so that's a very good case of, uh, of localized content, which um, I think the international uh, producers can, can, can take on board. 
And second most popular is Super Jojo. And it's, this is um, more of edutainment uh, animation because it's uh, all about uh, singing songs. Um, so, and, uh, and it's 3D animation, it's earlier education, and it's all um, of, of uh, learning uh, English, learning singing through animation. And it has become hugely popular, especially since the pandemic hit uh, early last year, the viewing figures have really grown quite, very quickly. So as you can see in only one week last year, the, the, the viewing figures was hitting 68 million. So, and this is something that parents can show to their children again and again. So that's, um, so, so that's why the VOD and the streaming platforms are popular with these kind of content. Over here, I'd also like to um, point out that as you can see from the picture, these are 3D and 3D right now are much more um, in demand in China than 2D. Uh, of course, Peppa Pig is the only, well, I think one of the only uh, exceptions, but all the broadcasters, investors are really looking for 3D animation with very colorful, lightheaded, bright uh, characters uh, um, and you know these kind of images and also not very Chinese. This is something we found working with international or UK producers that they tried to make the animation more Chinese. And our suggestion is, don't, uh, you don't have to. I mean, sometimes it even cause a bit of offense if you make the eyes look a bit too Chinese or, so let's just be, make them cute, plump, rounded and happy. Next, um, the, yeah, Paw Patrol, this is, uh, as we know, um, international animation and still doing very strong in China. So it's ranked number three um, overall in last year. And next, uh, Booney Bears. This is a, a locally produced uh, Chinese animation uh, being launched since 2012 and still going very strong. And they're very creative in coming up with different storylines and also feature length films, which have done also very well. Again, 3D. So, um, so yeah, so we get asked all the time when we're working with uh, UK and international producers and, and animation creators, like what are you looking for? What would work? So there are mainly two types of uh, animation or children IP that could work in China. One is the existing ones with a good volume of finished series. Um, we would encourage, you know, between 30, 30, 40 is kind of minimum because otherwise it's hard to generate um, good viewing and following um, up to hundreds. That's even better. So, of course, that's also good to be sold to broadcasters as well. So, um, so finished series or new animation projects that are developed by creators with very good track record. As you know, Chinese audience or broadcasters or investors haven't heard of a lot of international animations overseas. So it's really important to give them a reference to make them understand or uh, won any awards or, you know, so they could really have a concept of how successful you are and how likely you are to repeat that success. And next, um, the the people we work with, so we are on the market looking for good uh, content, animation content, because there are investors we work with in China who are keen to work with them. So um, uh, to put their money in, to air their program. So there are broadcasters. Um, I could see there are some very good broadcasters today here at, at the panel. So they are very good partners to work with, and they are looking to 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 invest directly into um, uh projects. Um, animation studios locally in China, who a lot of them have outstanding production capacity. So for them to invest, they could invest in kind. So they could underwrite some of some of the production costs, etc. And they're good partners to work creatively as well. And thirdly, other financial institutions who take a much harder approach to these kind of animation projects, and they really need to see how likely you are to generate good turnover very fairly quickly. So they have um, their set of financial criteria. Um, so, and our approach, and we feel this should be the approach when we come to children's IP, is that we really need to um, develop them with a 360 approach from merchandise, well, from, of course, broadcasting them on national television, VOD platforms, streaming uh, platforms, 
as well as to merchandise, to education uh, programs and, and uh, products, as well as uh, local attractions, on-site entertainment attractions, etc. So that is the best way we feel to develop your IP into a brand with enduring value for many years to come. Um, so how to get ready for a China partnership. And our first advice is always to, you know, to meet with us, meet with Chinese companies, production companies, broadcasters, as many as possible, uh, talk to them, get in touch. And, but when you do, you need to prepare yourself with your info deck, uh, very clear information on your program. And uh, if you're a co-development, co-production project in the pipeline, how much money you need to, to get it made, what's your production budget and your team Team, how good your team is, all the past track record portfolio. And very importantly, which we found lacking with a lot of producers is what are you ready to offer in return of these investments? Uh, so a lot of people, well, in China, people see these investments as a kind of um, venture capital. So it, it's always involve a kind of share, share of equity in the IP. So you have to come have very clear idea of how much money you're seeking and how much of the shares of this IP you're willing to give them in return. And lastly, what is your plan and your ambition? And it's we always encourage you to have a global plan. It should work more globally. And animation does have that good advantage over drama or you know entertainment shows that it could appeal to children worldwide. So have a clear plan on that. Right, so that's pretty much it. It's a very quick snapshot of the landscape of the market in China, the, the broadcasters, partners you need to know, you need to, need to be in touch with, and what you need to be prepared for. So yeah, so thank you very much for your time and thank you CMC for giving this opportunity to us. So thank you so much, Jean. There are so many questions that I would love to ask you right now, but we'll save them up because you talked about brand. And I know that's something that, that is key at the moment to, to what we need to do. So in our discussion, but just before we move to uh, Ligere, I wanted to ask you, you've got on one of the slides, um, hotness index. I meant to ask you the other day, what is the hotness index? Yeah, it's a kind of a, it's a kind of index that's based on the number of talks about it, people's uh, retweeting about it. And, you know, it's a kind of an index encompassing uh, the popularity in, in terms of the noises that's been made around it. That's brilliant. We need one here. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. And um, I look forward to, to having a, a, a broader discussion on some of those subjects later. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. So we're delighted, um, having had that landscape, to, to look a bit more at uh, the, some of the platforms that we were talking about. And I want to say a particular thank you to Ligere uh, to, for coming along. Ligere is from Tencent and going to give us just an overview of the company, what you're doing and what's working and connecting with um, Chinese kids. So over to you, Ligere. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, hi everybody, uh, long time no see, I'm, I'm Lija from Tencent uh, Video. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank CMC give me this uh, opportunity to meet everybody uh, this time. Uh, I know uh, some friends uh, wants me to share how Tencent chooses a new project and how to work with Tencent in a new content with some Chinese elements. Uh, Today, uh, I'd like to share uh, where a new project named uh, Tianjin and Kung Fu Sock to elaborate. Uh, this project was produced by Tencent and Yu Yang. Uh, I know the project director, ID is here too. Uh, from the Tencent side, uh, we choose it because it has the Kung Fu elements and it's good content for girls, especially for seven to nine years uh, years old girls. Uh, we'd like to make the content diverse enough in our platform and try it best to uh, satisfy all stages of audience requirements. Uh, the content for seven to nine girls is very important part of it. Uh, everyone knows that uh, the princess content was monopolized uh, by Disney, but the Tianjin and the Kung Fu Sock is very different from Disney content. 
the personality of Tian Zhen is really unique. Uh, she is not a stereotypical girl in our mind. She, she likes she like Kung Fu very much and very brief with a careless characteristic, uh, doesn't dry skirt and also doesn't sing a song. Uh, she's home is a laundry and not living in a castle. So um, I think this reason will bring about this project be popular in China. And it's very typically common girls personality nowadays especially in the alpha generation. Uh, and to uh, further step explain that we define a case born after uh, 2010 as uh, the alpha generation. Uh, another thing I'd like to share today is we, we found um, the case audiences are attracted by the short video. So uh, we produce different types of short videos, including the comedy videos or replenish the world background knowledge videos. Those will release uh, with the uh, episodes. Uh, at last, uh, let me briefly to summarize my point. Uh, the girl's content and uh, has unique character personalities content are what we want to find. And it must be connected and be acknowledged by the alpha generation. This is the most important. Uh, that's what I want to share today. Thanks everybody. It's very short. That, that's brilliant, Leisure. I, I think mm -hmm. everybody, um, it, it's difficult for all of us because we, we can't get to see 10 cents in the same way because we can't just press a yeah. button and, and watch. Do you want to just give us a little bit of what you've got on air at the moment, the type of things that you, you're showing? The type of shows because you've given us some examples of some of the the good shows have you yeah. what, what's in the schedule what type of programs work well uh it's it's a uh, new content and the main character is a, a little girl and uh, i think uh, that this show is uh very important for us because it's is the two girls we uh find in our part past few years we are uh, have the gap for the girls content mm -hmm. yeah we just have some uh content from disney you know some princess uh, content uh yeah uh, so uh we, we choose this one and uh, for the next uh, uh few years we, we also want to choose some new content with the girls for the girls audiences that's brilliant. And again, there were so many interesting things. I, and I think when we're in the wider discussion and we have Eddie in the discussion, we can talk about mm -hmm. co-pros and working yeah. in, in a group, if that's okay with you. So thank you very much indeed. And uh, look forward to seeing you later on. Um, so thank you. Uh, Cheng Fei, um, it's a real pleasure to, to have you here. And I know you've been a, a friend of CMC and you've We've met several times over the years. As I say, it's keeping the relationships open and it's knowing what you're doing now. So would you like to take us through what, uh, what you're doing at ICE and just give us a, a snap, snapshot of the landscape? Yep. Um, hello, everyone. So it's a great pleasure to meet everyone here today. And uh, thanks to CMC, thanks to Sarah and Darren. Um, thanks for having me again. Uh, for those who already know me, please just bear with me. Um, so I, I think people know IT as a streaming platform. Um, my team, what my team does is we're the original animation team. Um, it's really a pleasure today to share some of our, what we have produced in the past and what kind of um, mostly international collaboration we're looking for. Um, so basically, uh, our team mainly focusing on three areas in terms of animation, kids animation, uh, teenager and young adults, and also we um, produce virtual characters. So let's get started because um, given what we do here um, with kids animation. So basically, IGE has launched um, our first uh, kids 3D animation called Tuk Tuk Man in 2019. So we have them released around 70 episodes right now. And this is a show perhaps targeting kids from three to six years old. 
Um, you can see the whole show is more about safety training and all sorts of educational content and uh, um, transportation safety, etc. And after the lunch, we've got to the top rankings. And since last year, we started launching another show, which is now our flagship um, kids show called Deer Squad. Uh, we launched it last summer, and this is actually a great example for international collaboration. And this is a part where a lot of, perhaps a lot of you have met me and listening to me talking about it. So it's an IT original show, and the Nickelodeon has acted on, on the show as our creative supervisor. Uh, we have thought about producing Dear Squad since as early as 2017. It's actually been a very long time collaboration. And also we spend a lot of time in the creative stage and we're talking about it over and over again because we want this show to be an international show, not just uh, something that works for the China market. So it took a long time for us to do that. And so after three years, finally, we have the show, uh, the first season ready, and it's doing really, really well. Not only just on our platform, it's being broadcasted on Nickelodeon, uh, in Asia, in Europe. And from January this, this year, it's also broadcasted in uh, United States. And we've been told it's ranking now top, top three on Nickelodeon in the in, um, United States, which is great result. Uh, I'd love to share the trailer. Uh, could you please play that, Darren? Thank you. Coming soon, a new herd is about to stop your way. Yeah. Four deer with planet powers. La, la, la. Hold on tight. One mission to fight for good. You are amazing. So gear up and sound the horns. Let's do it. And meet the deer squad. Okay, so that's us, that's our deer. Um, I'm very glad to see them doing really well in the global market. Um, so that's a very successful example to us in terms of interna international collaboration. Um, however, like I said, I'm not limited to just working with um, big platforms like Nickelodeon. We're more than happy to work with small studios, small creative teams, um, just to get um, a better result, you know, in terms of better ideas and new ideas, especially. Um, so that's kids animation. We are also developing, some of my colleagues are developing um, content, animation content for teens and young adults. Um, given our experience, they're, they're slightly more tricky than kids content in terms of um, going out of China market, but that's, that's fine. That's something we do as well. And the last area we focus is actually virtual idols and characters. So this is quite new to us. We have been developing for the last uh, two and three years. And in this spirit, we created a band, which is called Rich Boom. And we launched the, sh the band in um, the end of 2019. So we have five really super cool looking characters. And we have done music, music videos, performances, uh, concerts, all sorts of things for the band. They, 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 they work like a real band, that sort of thing. Um, we're now in the stage of developing more content for this virtual band. So you can see drama series, uh, all the things planned for them. Um, it's going to be uh, something quite amazing in the future. So in a nutshell, so HD is developing more and more original animation content, which is our company strategy. So in the, in the international market, we especially hope to have more collaboration on kids animation. Um, we, we love to talk to creatives, production houses, studios, um, basically everyone in this area. Uh, we have our own show. We would like to distribute them to the global market as well. Tuk Takman is a great example. Um, we're, we're looking at distributors uh, for Europe, for, for North America, for everybody, for everywhere in the world. And we're also constantly looking for case animation projects with a global potential. So our targeting age group is around three to nine years old, quite flexible. You can have preschool, upper preschool, bridging shows, or seven to, year, seven to nine years old. That's all good to us. Um, we don't have too many restrictions in terms of the theme. We would prefer to see story ideas with some perhaps comedy elements, which work really well in China market. Um, so in generally speaking, these projects can be in very early creative stage or perhaps you already have pilot or have a trailer or a full Bible, that's all good. Um, I think that's all for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jingfei. Um, are you, uh, just 
you've got quite a wide range. And I think the the older group as well, are you looking for ideas for older as well as as well as that core three to nine? Um, I think mainly we're looking at three to nine. Three to nine, that's, that, that's fine. It, because as you say, it's quite, it's much more localized as you get older um, at, at, currently at the moment. And that's something in the discussion at the end um, and Jean brought up the discussion around localizing contents and how we, because we've in the past, all the discussions we've had have been much more about how we take UK to China and not how we really get into Chinese storytelling and start coming alongside creatively some of those ideas and what really works not just for that international stage but particularly for the Chinese the Chinese child so um mm, I um I mean we we I've had stories coming to me that I feel perhaps would work better in the west but not necessarily in in the China market mm -hmm. but it is a case-by-case -case sort of uh, situation <clears throat> Um, perhaps I can comment more if I have the if you have seen the stories, um, but some things like that do happen. Um, that's 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 brilliant. And and so when uh, later on when we're discussing how I, um, when we're in the group just talking through how those ideas come and the creativity behind it. So that that's we'll come to that later. So thank you very much indeed, and thank you for for sharing sharing that with us. Um, next we have Jian. Uh, Jian, Jian is now with uh, Shanghai Digital. Uh, Sorry, Shanghai Motion Thanks, Magic, yeah. Digital Entertainment, Shanghai <laughs> Media Group. <laughs> and um, you've joined recently. You're very much part of CMC and the CMC family. And you are going to talk us through what is happening at uh, Motion Magic. And then particularly going to give us a bit more of an insight into co-production so that we can come off that in our discussion later. Yeah. Over to you. Hey everyone, uh, this is Jan. You can also call me Romeo if you're terrible at pronouncing Chinese names. I, I hope you're not, but if you are, uh, here's to the rescue. So it's a great pleasure to join you on this panel today and uh, thanks Sarah and Greg for having me. Um, I'm currently the VP Business Development at Shanghai Motion Magic and we are one of China's largest CG content production companies and uh, we have um, a fully funded subsidiary of Shanghai Media Group. And I am currently overseeing all the business operations of uh, Motion Magic. And I'm also managing its international content uh, sales and distribution, um, co-productions and uh, some marketing and communication activities. And I'm based in London and my uh, headquarters based in Shanghai, uh, which is quite self-explanatory in its name. Um, so my speech today will be um, divided into two segments. The first, I'll be briefly introducing um, uh, my company, what we do, and then I'll be moving on to the uh, co-production side. As an animation studio, a significant, a significant part of what we do is to do with production. And we cover full um, production pipeline, and we specialize in 3D animation and VFX uh, production. And we're very proud to announce that we have fight back uh, from COVID, and we're now keeping our uh, production cap uh, capability to a normal level, which is uh, 1,500 minutes per year. And also, we are proud to have a very professional production management team, which is very essential when it comes to co-productions and production service work with overseas uh, studios or companies, because um, it can be tricky sometimes with misunderstandings and, and so on. So we have a multi-language team that can speak English, French, Japanese, Korean, and so on. Yeah, so here's a quick um, snapshot of the um, key project we have done in the past. So on the uh, top left corner, you can see Chuggington. It's very interesting because it's actually a service production work that we did with um, a British company based in Bristol called uh, um, uh, Ludorum and now Hachette. So this 
project is actually first brought to us back in 2006, where um, no, basically no Chinese company are interested in cooperating with foreign companies. So that's when we started the, the journey with the longstanding Chuggington series. And we have um, since been the, uh, the main production provider for the um, all seasons of Chuggington, which we just finished the first, uh, the last season early uh, this year, and it's broadcasting on CBBS at the moment. And um, there are two types of productions we do, of course. One is service work. Um, the other one is co-production. Um, so on this uh, snap snapshot, you can see Buddy, and what's the big idea? They're all examples of us working with um, a foreign partner from very early age. So um, what's, the, what's the big idea? I think it's won um, BAFTA and NSC for best animation TV series, which is a great honor for us. Um, we also have done um, very original uh, IP uh, of ourselves. It's called Magic Town. It's on the uh, uh, down right corner. So it's actually cooperated with uh, the world's largest um, education institution called uh, Jimbury. Um, so we basically tailored the content for them. And then after we created the content, we started to distribute and, uh, and monetize the IP uh, on the basis of it. Um, so, so we just want to say that we are very much looking to discussing with all of the uh, British delegates uh, tomorrow and uh, in the future because we do welcome uh, co-productions and any sort of um, co uh, cooperation with foreign companies. So here's to show how versatile we can get because um, Legion, Chen Fei will know this, but uh, the swordsman, kung fu, martial arts sort of uh, style of animation and also live action dramas are very, very popular uh, among young teens and uh, especially in Z generation. So we have jumped on the bandwagon again. So we have uh, partnered up with uh, Legion's Tencent Video and also China Reads to uh, sort of develop uh, the China uh, web anime um, because they are based on uh, web novels, which is very um, prevalent even overseas. So um, we sort of jump in a very early de development stage and basically design and create the whole show. And uh, especially the top left corner, you can see Dou Po. It's also called uh, the Battle. Um, let me see that. Um, yeah, you can see you can see the words. So basically, they are the most popular um, anime show on Tencent uh, video platform, and it's even um, bypassing the Japanese animes, and it's got about six uh, six billion uh, view counts in total. It's just a quick overview um, as to what we can do apart from um, animation and anime. So we also participate in feature films like Final Fantasy, and we also uh, produce game trailers. Um, we, we're also big VFX providers for uh, many TV shows in China and the most popular um, re um, reality shows in China as well. Here's the last bit of our uh, show reel. Basically we do commercials and sort of multimedia um, collaborations. For example, the, the, the top one is the one we do for the, uh, the landmark of, of Shanghai basically, um, is to show all the uh, digital content on a, a 270 degree sort of uh, curl um, screen so that all the people, all the tourists can see how great Shanghai is just to showcase our uh, technology to combine digital and um, immersive live action. And, you know, unlike other animation studios who's solely focusing on um, production, uh, producing content, uh, due to the unique ecosystem we had uh, within Shanghai Media Group, um, we're also be able to effect, um, effectively, um, you know, operating on the commercial side as well. So first is distribution. Um, we have two um, very distinctive advantage when it comes to distribution. Um, one is that because we have abundant internal resources within our SMG system. Uh, for example, the uh, two Max TV, which Jean just showcased, is actually one of our uh, internal channels. And also we have a flagship brand um, of channels called uh, Best TV by Shitong. 
So basically, they are uh, China's largest IPTV and OTT operator uh, with a combined 100 million uh, subscribers. And uh, uh, its mobile apps has over 60 million uh, users. And, uh, and it, it has a great appetite for content because it um, normally acquires around um, 2,500 films and over uh, 1,000 hour long of uh, TV programs per year. Um, so, and the second advantage that we have is that we are a state-owned company, um, which means that because we all know that distribution in China, especially for foreign content, can get really tricky because of the different policy and quotas. But um, you know, one of the perks being a state-owned company is that it's much easier for you to apply for a domestic license for the content you're about to distribute. Um, and the second point is that we also, you know, thriving at licensing and merchandising um, because um, we can also leverage the rich um, resources uh, well, Shahi Media Group has. Um, um, because, for example, for the Magic Town uh, project that we originally produced, we have already expanded to all the uh, licensing and merchandising sort of arenas because we've covered toys, publishing, um, games, stationery, uh, live, uh, live action drama, which we cooperate with the Shanghai uh, Media Theater, which is the company that introduced Sleep No More into, into China. Uh, it's also part of uh, SMG. So what we're looking for is, because we are always welcoming all types and modes of uh, collaborations with foreign partners. But um, here are a few selected uh, approaches that we uh, prefer to go with. So I think it's very in line with what um, Lija, Chen Fei and Jean has, has uh, covered on. So um, I'd like to discuss those possibilities with you uh, tomorrow and uh, in the near future. Just a quick uh, introduction to our team. So we are Owned by SMG, we have 20 years of experience funded in two, uh, 2000. We have probably one of the largest animation uh, team in China since we have uh, 500 uh, in-house artists relating to animation. And uh, uh, we have, uh, apart from the Shanghai headquarters, we have three cities um, that we have branches in. It's Changsha, Dalian, and Luoyang. Just uh, um, some uh, snapshot of our studios. Yeah, here's a quick overview of, of, of our uh, clients. Yeah, just to give you a, a very you know brief introduction to Shine Media Group. Um, I think SMG is probably the most complete um, uh, portfolio in terms of media entertainment uh, in China because its presence has already covered um, television animation, uh, publishing, radio, um, internet, e-commerce, film, uh, console game, theater, tourism, and even live entertainment. Um, yeah, so that's just basically showing you how many uh, channels um, internally that we own. And we also uh, own some of the most iconic uh, landmarks in Shanghai, including the Oriental Pearl TV Tower, the Mercedes-Benz Arena, and we, we even holds a 20% um, equity share of Shanghai Disney Resort. So I think that's all for my company introductions. I'll, I'll make sure that I'll, I uh, don't waste any time. I just jump into the um, co-production side because uh, first off, I'd like to you know, reflect upon um, you know, my experiences over the years walking across the two great cultures and two great nations, China and Britain. And especially I used to work for a British company, which enables me to actually observe the uh, emerging and thriving of the China uh, animation industry from afar and being able to identify the similarities and differences between the two cultures and two types of mindset. Um, so I've got some tips for anyone who's interested in, you know, having a deep relationship or collaboration with China. So first is that I think you should always keep an open mind when it comes to co-production because I've been approached many times by different um, international, uh, you know, creative producers that 
they're saying, oh, we have this, um, we have this great uh, project uh, tailored for China. We have this panda character. We have this dragon character looking really cute. Um, but when it show when it when it's uh, brought to our attention to to the board meetings, we suddenly realize it's not the dragon or the panda that we as Chinese audiences are um, easily ad identifying with. It's basically a westernized imagination of something that's not even existing in China. So it, it just, we just want, you know, the um, international producers to, to respect the, the authenticity of the culture. It doesn't have to be, you know, that detailed. But one solution to that is that you can always go to a Chinese counterpart at a very early development stage of your show when it's relating to China, right? So you can ask for their opinions. They can sit down and brainstorm with you and pin down the final elements that can, you know, both have the appropriate China culture element to it. And also um, it has, it has an international appeal to it as well. So that's my first option. It's just the first uh, tips is to, to keep an open mind and go to the Chinese um, counterpart as soon as early as possible, basically. And um, second is that because the Chinese government is actually endorsing the idea of Chinese culture going out. So it's a great opportunity more than ever that you should, you know, when you have an idea, or even, even, even if you don't, you can go to your Chinese media company, uh, streamers, if they allow you, Li Jia and, and Chen Fei, <laughs> please correct me if, if I'm wrong. So uh, you can go to them and ask them if they have any ideas in mind, um, because there's so many hidden gems in, in, in Chinese culture that, you know, for example, Chinese medicine. I haven't seen any animation, you know, has, has a touch on that. And also there's many ancient mythologies um, recorded even before the Qin dynasty of China. Um, there's always many, like, like, a, like, you know, treasury that you can actually go and seek for the right ideas. So I think um, because your value and your unique selling point is that you have the storytelling um, techniques that has appealed to the international audience. So you have to make sure that the Chinese counterpart understands your value and make sure that they can collaborate with you on a Chinese story that can go far, far away from China and go a long way to the international route. Uh, so that's my second tip. And uh, third tip is quite practical is that you if you if your project has already got commissioned or picked up by a you know major broadcaster or streaming platform it really increased the chance um, of it being greenlit by the chinese counterpart because for example um this uh, project i just showed called buddy so it's brought to motion magic um right after it's got commissioned by netflix which becomes a netflix uh, originals uh, afterwards and then that beats other projects that don't really have a, a platform attached to them uh, right away so uh, it's a very practical uh, thing to think about and my um last tip is to always like jean said was great agree on the um the business details um before you sign the deal um, no matter how perfect that agreement looks like to you, because you do want to, you know, define clearly um, who owns what rights um, before anything else. So that's really crucial. Um, so um, to sum up, I, I've always been a strong believer for um, the great value of cultural exchange and, and uh, cross-border collaborations between China and other countries. And there might be some minor setbacks along the road, but I do believe the end result will be satisfactory. Um, um, but you have to make sure that the uh, communication is transparent and the collaboration is throughout the process. And um, I think you're ready to go. Um, I think that's all my part. I hope it's not wasting too much of time. That's that's wonderful. And I, I I I think you've given us some gems and I think, you know, hopefully we can come back to some of those in the discussion today. But what it's making me think is there's a whole other discussion where we just talk about that that co-production. So thank you very much. Um no Gian, And um I'd like to bring up Alicia. Um and Alicia. 
Uh, hi. hi, hi, Alicia. Um, Alicia is from Singing Grass, and she's going to give us, if if you don't mind, a very quick pricey of what you're doing the education market we are running late so i'm going to have to move everybody on quite okay. fast so thank you very much that's fine um hi everyone thank you sarah and greg for the unique opportunity here um so my name is alicia and i'm um, the managing director of singgrass we are a business consultancy advising on access and development strategies for china in particularly in publishing um so we work with a range of international international book fairs, in, including the London Book Fair, the Beijing International Book Fair, as well as content producers such as uh, BBC Studios and uh, the Lego Group, advising on China strategy for some of their IP brands. So I think I'm going to keep it very brief. Um, really um, by hearing some of the other panelists talk about, um, you know, all the chi Chinese animation IPs, I want to say when you want to, I guess, expand your brand um, children's IP in China, education is such important value um, to, to, to consider. Um, in the past year, despite COVID, um, in China, one in three books sold is a children's title. So it's still a very robust growing sector. Um, as when you look at some of the key growth areas in, in the children's kind of book sector in China, you look at quite clearly, there's three areas that reflect also across animation shows. Um, so early reader, we talk about like toddlers. Um, I think when Jen earlier mentioned like um, Piper Pig, you know, some of the great IPs, um, those kind of toddler books, interactive activity books are huge growth in China in the past year. I think they grow about from 5% to over 11% in the market share. Um, and when you think about toddler, you think, why talk about education? Um, when you talk about uh, toddler books in China, actually, you, you look at a very strong educational value. So people use, you know, that kind of interact, interactive bilingual content. Um, people use those talking pens. Um, you know, kind of read their books where you can hear the sound or some of the animation clips and seeing online for free as well. Um, and the second genre is popular science. Um, and that's really kind of effectively how some of the brands like Legos come across so well in China. And I saw it's interesting and um, earlier, you know, the representative from Tencent mentioned, um, you know, they want to create a different girl's character in China on screen for, for the age group of seven to nine. And it's clearly across in this specific sector that STEAM um, is a very, very strong growing sector in China. Um, I think in 2020, the year on year growth um, for the popular science sector has grown into 17.9% in China, which is things that one fifth of the market is actually devoted on non-fiction content such as STEAM titles. Um, and in this particular genre, there's also a very strong demand for you know, that kind of new tech educational value. So multimedia elements um, you know, involve popular science knowledge that kids seen um, through animation shows, kind of life uh, TV shows, as well as reflecting in, in book um, kind of learning as well. And lastly is, is cross media. Um, when I think today we talk about animation, but actually really cross media content led in China in particular by the audio growth um, has really taken a big leap throughout COVID, throughout the pandemic. Um, the popularity in smart speakers and podcasts in China. Um, so it's really encouraged the rise of audio subscriptions and some of the bundled product for children and parenting content. Um, and hence you have, um, you know, traditional animation production companies, you have publishers, you have new um, ad tech players all playing heavily in this field. Um, you also have traditional kind of companies like a very popular brand called Anko Kai Storytelling in China it was originally a, a leading Chinese, um, Chinese children audio app. Um, and they become, you know, kind of investing heavily in the past few years in their original content making and expanding from, you know, audio books to um, TV animations to, to books. They just done a fantastic collaboration with Lego on one, one of their original um, kind of uh, China themed toy uh, inspired by um, the journey to the West, Monkey King story. 
So I think that the line is getting very blurred in terms of um, the cross media content. But one thing at the core is education is really in the DNA of it all. Um, I remember talking to animators here in the UK, people say it's about 30% education, 70% entertainment. And I think in China, it's the other way around. You're talking about 70% of education, 30% of, of um, entertainment. Hopefully it just give you some good food for thought and we can discuss more later at the discussion. That, that gave us loads of food for thought. And thank you so much for, for giving us a, a race through and a glimpse um, of what you do. And as you say, you're based in London, so people can always get in touch and have a chat. So thank you. Um, next, I would like to ask Man Man to join us. And you know, once again, we're moving quite fast through things. So Man Man from We Kids, who we, we know well, again, part of the, the CMC family. Would you like to tell us where you are now and, and do Tell us what we kids are up to. Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. And uh, please allow me to give a really short introduction about we kids, just in case, right? And uh, my name is Man Man Chen, and I'm we kids in China. And uh, for those of who have heard of we kids, we have been as a kids content buyer from China within the past like uh, seven years. But right now things change. You can see the slogan right there is connecting to millions in China and the world right now. And add one word: create creatively. So because of uh, various reasons, I'm not going to say that, you know, in today's session, our business has changed. And uh, the thing that we're more focusing on right now is content creation, original content creation. Yeah, well, you can go with the next slide. And uh, just like uh, Sarah mentioned that uh, we work with some foreign uh, partners within the past three years. And uh, there are three ways. The first thing is uh, the, the image in the middle, we set up a Wicked Lab. It's a creative studio in Suzhou in the center of China. And we're getting started to create our own projects. And secondly, the image to the left, we uh, establish uh, a term, a platform called the China Tales Incubator with Nirvana, one of the top animators in Canada. And we try to find the Chinese talents and stories from within China. And we have two seasons running the China Tales. Right now we have a complete, uh, we have the winner and uh, we're working on one of the projects originally from the competition. And third one is that uh, for most of the, the content that we create, we work with international artists and uh, studios. Uh, this is the image showing one of the writers from South Africa, which is really nice guy, nice writer. We invite him and his partner to Beijing to experience the whole Beijing view, you know, just before the COVID-19 happens. So it's really lucky. And uh, just a quick, quick view of our one of our shows called the Town and Jojo Show. And uh, it's a sports game show. And uh, I think after this horrible year, that everybody is waiting the COVID-19 going to pass really soon. And uh, it's really important that health is to everybody. And to the kids, I think uh, it's really important to demonstrate the understanding of how physical actives is important to them. And uh, this show is a 100% wicked show. And it's about two pandas holding a talk show or game show. And uh, they uh, uh, just uh, ask, the animals from all over the world, especially from the hot countries, to the winter, to experience winter and to challenge some winter sports. And the other reason why the idea comes out is that uh, the next year there's going to be the Winter Olympic Games uh, international event, which will happen in Beijing. And uh, we, will, we want to take use of it to take this opportunity to let more people to know what winter is and try to encourage people to go outside to play in the winter. And uh, right now we have, uh, uh, we, we already have the development fund from TVO, the provincial broadcaster from Canada. And uh, under development, we have the Bible, the script, the presentation. And right now uh, we are also talking to different broadcasters in Europe and in America. And uh, this is the show it's called Tom and Jojo Show, which is one of our top list. And this one called Dreamweavers, the show that I mentioned is the win originated the winner of the China Tales Incubator from a studio in Beijing. And uh, Nirvana and WeKids have 50-50 invested to the show and uh, co-developed. And it is purely a co-production, co-development show between China and Canada. 
we share the artists, the writers, the production companies, and right now we have the teaser, the Bible, and the one are handling on the distribution in uh, North America, and we are also looking for to the partners all over the world. So this is a re really good example how we treat the uh, international co-production and how we find a good partner to run a new uh, project. It's a girl show. It's a for about fashion and magic and uh, making clothes themselves. It's really interesting. And we also have some, uh, uh, you know, other shows under development at the early stage. And this one called Cat Eye. Uh, everybody knows that. Uh, uh, there's a Mulan movie, right? Last year. And this one's, we, we don't want Mulan. We want to create a new hero, the girl hero. It's a Chinese hero. And you can see the style is really unique. Oh yeah. I'm just saying that uh, we have all, all another, you know, many, you know, shows under development. So we're looking for uh, creators and writers and directors to help to do, you know, like uh, the show that not only for the Chinese market, but also have the distribution chance to all over the world. So that's it. That's my think, really brief introduction. Yeah. I, th I think it's another one of those relationship building. We, we've worked really closely with you and it's keeping those ties and knowing what you're doing. So thank you very much for joining us. And, and sorry, I'm going to have no to problem. move on. Um, but thank you. And hopefully we'll get a little bit of a discussion in a while. So thank you. Um, so next up, I'd like to ask Fambo, also known as Eddie, to join us. And Eddie, could you give us a rump through what you're doing at Yuyong. Hello, everybody. Uh, and I'm very uh, pleasured to be sharing some of my insights. Uh, I'm sure that everybody already shared so much, so I will try to keep my uh, speech brief. Uh, so a little bit about my company. Yu Yang had been um, in the developing IPs and children's contents uh, for over 10 years. And uh, throughout the 10 years time, we've uh, worked with a v number of uh, international partners and counterparts to produce a number of shows, uh, not only aired in China, but also uh, worldwide, including Peking Duckling, uh, which were aired in uh, Disney Junior in the US and uh, uh, Love Monster uh, in, in collaboration with the BBC. Uh, and Battle Claw, it's, uh, we work with uh, Mattel as toy partner uh, that are shown both in China and, and the US. And uh, most recently, our uh, uh, development and in, uh, already in production uh, called TZ and Kung Fu Sock uh, is in collaboration with Tencent. Uh, that are also that is also sold to uh, uh, Discovery Kids in uh, Latin America. So um, throughout the years, I just wanted to share a few things that I found useful in terms of collaborating with other partners and. Uh, uh, and counterparts. Uh, and for one, uh, it's helpful to build understanding of, of uh, children and the markets that you're trying to work with. Uh, because I would say the the kids can be different, uh, but also not so different. Uh, and different as in, um, first off, there are a number of things, for example, age compression uh, that are happening much faster uh, in China, for example, uh, also their their uh, educational system can be quite different, uh, and their taste and aesthetics, uh, the things that, are, that they they look at every day can be quite different, uh, but not so different uh, as in the kids, their emotional components and uh their the, you know how they react to certain emotional things uh and and uh you know their, their relationship with their family and the general theme of love and friendship is all universal so they're different and they're not so it, it's uh, it's 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 a um, i guess it's a difficult and interesting thing to navigate uh these uh these things and trying to find what's best for 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 your project uh, that, that leads to my second point is that uh, you re uh, we really want to find uh, a unique uh, setup and tailor make uh, a process for each and individual show uh, because every show is different uh, and the process that implemented for each project should fit uh, and help the show uh, grow 
uh, and ideally you would have a priority whether you are prioritizing in uh, China or uh, somewhere else in the world uh, that would come uh, as a, a pillar for when you create all of these content uh, you would you were then uh, build all the ideas and the visuals and everything uh, to have something to uh, to to hook on to I guess um, and, uh, and lastly, I would say that uh, it's critical for a company like us uh, or a studio to have a unique creative uh, voice, uh, you know, uh, to cultivating that kind of creative uh, culture uh, in your team. And even when you're building a show for different market and different uh, uh, children around the world, uh, you have something uh, unique to offer. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, something that we always, uh, as creators and studio always believe in to, uh, to not to try and create shows that pleases everybody, uh, but, uh, but try to create uh, things that um, maybe some people will love, but they will really, really love it. Uh, yeah, because uh, this way you will have uh, a taste uh, and something uh, different um, and uh, not uh, try to make something to uh, uh, try to appeal everybody, but but end up with something very bland. So that's uh, that's my take. And uh, yeah, and uh, and Leisure already mentioned our latest show, TZ and Kung Fu Wa, we just uh, uh we're going to launch this summer uh i think there's a couple of very interesting things that i would like to share very briefly uh first off is that uh like leader mentioned we are building a lot of the uh ideas for short form content inside these uh, long form uh 11 minute content uh there's easter eggs uh, also things that we can turn into short form content uh, already built in as we create this long form uh, content. Uh, the other thing is that um, uh, we really try to push the, the boundaries in terms of aesthetics and uh, storytelling, uh, challenge the kids uh, as we uh, tell the stories uh, and not talking down to kids, but also, but try to uh, inspire them and try to sort of uh, make them watch things maybe a little bit more complicated than uh, the age age uh, they were sort of targeting at, uh, trying to create this um, even better uh, uh, leap and uh, you know open up more opportunities uh, for our for our shows to to reach a broader audience uh, potentially. Um, I guess that's that's everything. Um, uh, I, but, you know, thanks for, for keeping that tight and um, thank yes. you for us. That was that was brilliant. And as ever, you young are, are part of us, and it's lovely to have you on board. So thank you. Um, thank you, Sarah. The ne next up, I'd just like to ask Darren. Can we can we bring Trevor up? Hi. Hi. Great. <laughs> Uh, How are you? So, thank you so much. So, Trevor, we're 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 trying to get to the discussion. Um, yeah. you could just give us. Uh, Trevor is joining us. I think you're on your travels in a school somewhere, and you very kindly dropped into to have a quick chat. The most important thing being that we've known each other for several years before you went back to China and set up two studios. Yeah. And in doing that, you've had some great success through contacts through CMC events. So yes. do you give us a, a very quick one, two minute snapshot so that we can move to the to the discussion. Yeah, you bet. So we are an original IP studio. Uh, we've created a show called Super Boomy, uh, which is quite successful in China and is actually selling around the world now as well. And I've created a second show called Piggy, uh, which is in production right now. And we have worked with partners we met through CMZ. For example, uh, we're working right now with Mark Gordon and uh, Score Draw Music, which is a fantastic partner. I've really enjoyed working with them. And I think we actually connected with them at the last China Connect. Um, so we're very happy to be a part of the CMC family. We also work with Jellyfish and have a great relationship with them. And I've, I've, I've also brought projects to our UK partners. So uh, in addition to obviously our priority is our own IP, but just because of my connections in the business and the amount of time that I've spent creating original IP, if we have an outstanding partner, uh, we are happy to introduce them, you know, sort of to our Up Studios network. So what we're looking for are other great creators, um, animation production houses uh, in the UK 
and you know partners like we've already found, um, uh, like those two examples I presented. So uh, today I'm just here for as long as I can be. I'm actually in the midst of a month long tour. I'm in Shanghai right now, but I'll be in Hangzhou in a few days and then Guangzhou. So it's a very busy time because we're in production on shows and I'm also the director of uh, all the series. So uh, we've got a lot of stuff on our plate, but I'll try to stay for as long as I can. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for being so succinct. And Hang Zhao remind, reminds me of us all at IABC, where we take people yes. out. And again, yeah. a great connector. So thank you very much. I'm going to move on quickly to, to Lulu. Hi, Lulu. Just in two minutes, would you like to say a bit about you in particular, uh, coming from it, having worked in America, coming to China, and then it would be good to just perhaps move very quickly into the um, discussion if we can. Uh, sure. Um, and since everyone has already talked about so much um, in terms of things to consider when wanting to do co-productions or cooperations, I won't dwell on those. I just gloss over uh, what I had. But very briefly, hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Thank you, Sarah, Greg, Tony and the whole team and Darren for pulling this together. Um, and a little bit about myself. Currently, I am the um, a producer and also creative director for Amazing Zebra. We're establishing a new animation studio and uh, our investors have just greenlit our very first feature. So we're very excited about that. Um, and in the past, um, before taking on this role, I've also been an IP creator. So I've been very much in the same boat as some of our listeners today, perhaps, uh, as well as a cre creative consultant. And uh, way back when I used to work on live action, co-production, films development and production. Um, so a little bit about our new animation studio. We are involved with IP development, um, anything from pre uh, preschool through to kids and to family entertainment, especially in the filmic sphere. And we are also thinking about going to shorter form content, such as series, whether it's distribution via web or proprietary apps or um, television. And we are quite open to co-productions and in fact have very warm relations with the official bodies here, both in the TV and in the film sectors. And we already, um, in terms of our investors and some of our producers, already have experience with ancillary products tied to our entertainment products. And uh, we're also looking into immersive experiences. It's a very high tech um, online offline kind of uh, um, I would just say in terms of what we're looking for and the things that we think about a lot in what we do are longevity and long-term relationships. And this is one of the reasons that we're very excited about potentially cooperating with UK talent, because while we do have access to great resources here and abroad, we really love the charming, witty, and gentle kids' perspectives that tend to come through with UK-style storytelling. And we... Um, are not looking so much for, I think, a semiotic Chineseness, which some of our um, fellow panelists have already talked about, but really things about the human condition and finding those universals and understanding the common aspirations that younger generations, regardless of geography, may identify with. Um, and we find that generally speaking, family, warmth, humor, um, children sympathetic or children centric POVs generally do very well. So just in terms of what we're looking for and in terms of the market, we are looking, as I said, for long term partnerships, um, but specifically visual development in terms of character and world design, as well as writers. So I look very much forward to our discussion and um, that was my truncated intro <laughs> to everything thank you very much so um thank you thank you very much lulu and um i think the really interesting thing is how how we see that blend between bringing different cultures together and how we make those work which i think is a whole probably a whole other discussion um i think one of the the things people uh, in the chat are uh, asking about is how a how they can get in touch with you which i would suggest that maybe if people need to get in touch with you um we we ask lauren to distribute that um separately to the to, to this um the the other thing is and i think um chen fei answered this one earlier around how most people want to be approached in terms of content which is to have those snapshots first and then if you've got other materials that's great but usually you can tell whether you want to go further as quite 
an early stage. Um, I think the, the just because I'm I'm thinking with with the time that we've got, what would be interesting, um, and perhaps this one's for uh, Chen Fei and Leisure is how do you take something that is coming from elsewhere and how do you see the value in it? What is the value you see in working with somebody that is from the, say the UK? Um, we're looking for original ideas mm -hmm. and especially as kids animation, I think um, the, the universal themes work, love, care and all that and a little, little, with a little bit of education in it. I think usually things like that would work globally. Yes, that's that's brilliant. And and Leger, um, we've got a question from Sarah Lawrence. I'm, I'm, she's asking, can we just go through what you need to present to partners to gain interest? Trailer, scripts, Bible, etc. Um, what what is it that you're looking for when you get something landing in your inbox? Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, I think the basic uh, materials is would be uh, a Bible and the scripts, and if you have a trailer, it's, it's, it's really, really good. And I'm presuming, certainly, I I was talking to various broadcasters from other countries, and everybody's in overwhelm, because I think what's happened at the moment is that everybody has been uh, sitting there working very creatively and coming up with ideas because they've not been as in production as they were so it's brilliant from our point of view of lots of ideas but equally everybody's inboxes are full is is that the case with you that at the moment you've got quite a lot to go through um yeah ideas are great but it might take longer to come back etc uh yeah you know uh as a producer i know Work for to uh, working with new clients uh, each year. Uh, I need to talking with uh, different clients in the whole world. And uh, I remember last year we are to choose more than five hundred new projects in the past year, one year. So uh, yeah, it's uh, we couldn't choose too many projects because I have the budget for each year. But uh, we will try to find the different uh, project with the unique idea, especially in the character personality <laughs> and the character relationship. So uh, we want to make our platform uh, diversity enough. Uh, that's what I want to see. That's brilliant. I know Alicia's got to hop off in a second. So one very quick question, Alicia. Um, because you're based here, but you're you're from Beijing. Um, what is it that you see that's a win? When because you're particularly books, which are as a different, much more visual, you can look at them quite quickly. Mm. What what is a win for the Chinese market? In one um, sentence. I, I, one sentence hard. I think it would be think early age. I think in the UK, people tend to think the core cool age group would be eight plus, uh, you know, seven plus, where in China, the earlier, the better. I think um, in, in China, it's, 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 it's the earlier generation that the parents investing hugely into, and they're a lot more internationally aware. Um, so I would say the core cool age group is actually shift a little bit different from the West. It's, you know, three to to seven nine. So by the time they go to univer um, university, go to schools in in China from age six onwards, um, you know they'll just have less and less time. So nine onwards is just study. I think very little entertainment. Yeah, I think early age is better. So early age, and as you mentioned earlier, interactive. So yeah. thank you very much, and thank you, thank yeah. you, Alicia. Mm -hmm. um, just to to. Uh, to, to just get a snapshot of everybody. So yeah, Lulu, we, we've had quite a, a long conversation and it'd be lovely at some point to, to have a longer one, particularly about how to work internationally. Um, so again, if we do one sentences in terms of what you would say that gold dust is around doing a co-pro. Um, one sentence, uh, it's kind of gauntlet. I would say it's kind of like getting married. 
do your due diligence. You can actually have more than one thing in common that you want to accomplish. Um, ultimately, you, you both need to, I think, want to do this and for a variety of reasons, not just for one especially very practical reason. Um, what I look for, and perhaps this is because of my um, I spend a great deal of my time in America and also in the Netherlands, but I really think passion is important. You know, I mean, if you have enough as a funder or as a producer, there are people who want to work with you. But what I really look for is, do you, do you really like the story? Do you really see what we're trying to do with it? And do you want to help us add value and take it somewhere else, take it to another stratosphere? I think that for me is what really stands apart because all things being equal, we have so many talented storytellers, but we really want to work with people that we could sort of see ourselves being married for a good long time. So that would be my two cents. Thank you very much. And, and uh, so Trevor, going on from that, just very quickly, um, you've, worked a lot with people pitching to you etc cetera, etc cetera. what again do you see is something that would hit the mark when somebody's coming to you with a co-pro and makes it easier for you to go yep i could work with them yeah i think uh it, the key thing is they have done some homework about the market themselves and thought you know about how this would work i think that uh you know obviously part of our value add is we do understand the local market and also we're able to understand the international market and figure out a way to bridge the two um, so that shows that we work on always we're looking to have them travel so we want every show that we create like boomy or piggy to be very successful domestically in china but also to be successful around the world so we would want other producers and other creators to have that same mindset um, so to have done some preliminary homework and thought about why, you know, their project will work in China, um, you know, and why they would choose to work with us, for example, you know, what types of synergies um, they actually have done research about and thought that would make good sense and good partnerships um, terms. So I think just doing that little bit of homework will put you ahead of the rest. I mean, obviously, as Leaguer mentioned, uh, they go through hundreds of entries, you know, every year and, and submissions. Um, you know, we have a pretty high bar and filter as well. And so we won't look at everything just because we think there's a, a certain segment that we're going to be really strong at and certain partnerships that we think we can make very successful. So I think if as a creator, you just do that homework beforehand, uh, your rate, hit rate of success will be much higher. Thank you very much. Um, man, man, just very quickly, uh, one of the things that I'd wanted to explore further, but and we probably will do another time, but particularly around Chinese story, I think lots of people have alluded to it. And the discussions we've I've had with various people is Chinese story is really strong. We talked about Moulin and um and looked at how that really works on the international stage. There, there are loads of other things that are sort of, we, we don't automatically assume. Do you think that that's a rich stream, particularly for script writers that are on here or animators that want to get involved? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because, uh, you know, during the long history, there are lots of uh, stories or myths in China. But uh, as we, when we went the China Tales Incubator, and also when we discover our project, try to make some inspirations from Asian stories, what we see, what we see is that uh, it's not easy, it's challenging, no matter for the Chinese writers, creators, or the international writers. You know, the younger, let's say the younger Chan Chinese generations, they're not really accept uh, Asian story telling the Asian way. They're gonna make something new. They experience so much different new technologies and ways of open the world. They need something new. Even though you hold on the same story, they need to tell a different way. So it's uh, one of our, I, I think there are a couple of our projects is we based on the Asian stories, but uh, we try to play some new techniques, new ways to, to express it to the, to, to the world. So it's, it's challenging. I could talk to you for ages because I think a good story, it can be 2000 years old, it could be made today, a good story that connects with kids, Peppa Pig or Moulin, they, they work and they connect at a deeper level. So thank you, Man Man. Um, last word from, from Eddie. Eddie, what would you say for a, a company that wants to approach you? What would the thing be that you'd look at and go creatively that that could work? One sentence. Well, it's getting hotter and hotter, isn't it? <laughs> um, 
Well, uh, I would I would be uh, if I'm to work with an international uh, partner, I would definitely be looking for something uh, uh, unique in terms of uh, you know whatever that company is based. Uh, it you know it's bringing uh, that could potentially work in China. Uh, you know like. I don't know what it is, but like sometimes when you see it, it just like that could that could work uh, here uh, in 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 some ways. Uh, and I would I would really encourage people to uh, try and do their um, I guess uh, like I said earlier to have a unique voice uh, as a creative uh, you know. Uh, uh, studio or person, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think I think uh, I, I, you know structurally it's difficult to uh, create something entirely new. But uh, for uh, for example, if you have a, a good high concept or something that's very fresh, I think it's always uh, something that we look to uh, work with and uh, to begin involved with. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, Gian, just um, one sentence. You're based in the UK, so people from the UK were on the time, same time zone. Doesn't mean if you're in China, we can't talk to you. It's trickier with time zones. Um, one, one sentence on what you think the secret of a co-production that you might feed in to people would be. Um, I think, like I just said, um, you have to have a very transparent communication. You have a mutual uh, respect and, and understanding of um, the culture, both countries. Um, you know, for us, for Motion Magic and Shine Media Group, it's better that you are planning, you know, we're actually plan pre-planning on the co-production and production side, basically, apart from the uh, designing and story uh, development. So I think, yeah, just keep keep the conversation um, transparent, um, keep the conversation going, and um, pay extra attention to the cultural delicacies, um, and uh, respect each other, and that that that'll do it. I think. Thank you so much, and. I Jean, to round off, you started with so many facts and there's so much we'd like to talk about. Just in that last piece, one of the things you and I had a, a chat about and would have loved to have had more time to talk about was about flexibility and how in the current climate, wherever you are in the world, the one thing that, that needs to happen to keep the industry going is about being open and flexible. Do you want to just give us one sentence on, on, on that? Yeah, sure. I think, yeah, being flexible and being open. I think last year we all had a pretty rough year for most people. So I think especially for creators, um, it's, I mean, the holy grail is to get a 52 episode commissioned by a big player, but I think very few of us would, um, would get that. So I think we could start something smaller, you know, either to produce it in a short form or to create your visual first, because as um, just a previous question you put towards our panelists, what would grab them? I think it's the first half minute when we look at something, it needs to be appealing, attractive, and just using the analogy that I really like from Lulu, it's if, the co-production is like marriage, the pitching is like dating. So it, you really need to have the best first uh, instant attraction to when the, when they look at your visual. So you could focus on that at the time being. And also there are other opportunities like brand funded content or even advertising for you know online and social viral um, uh, kind of circulation. So be open to all these kind of opportunities, however small. So I want to thank all of you so much. There was so much content. The most important thing about today was about keeping our relationships going and to keep touching base with everybody so that, that when everything moves on, I won't say goes back to normal because we'll be moving to a new iteration and flexing, that everybody is able to come to China and, and be able to continue the discussions that we've been having. While we've been going through, there's so much in this that um, I've been getting messages. If you wonder why I've been doing bits on the side, 
that we'll really be looking at what we could do in the summer with um, our Focus in China sessions or session sessions, because there's so much gold dust in what we're doing and we haven't had enough time to get into as much depth um, as we could do in certain areas where we've had gold dust in other, other areas. So thank you all so much for joining in and being part of this. And I know that you know, DIT and Open Beijing will equally be delighted that we've, we've done this and we'll be in touch about what we could do in order to just drill down and, and look and have more showcasing in, uh, in the summer. So thank you so much. We've just made such progress in improving you know, everybody's understanding and building those connections, whether they be that people know who you are or whether they follow up, they know more about you. So again, thank you to our sponsors, DIT and Open Beijing. Do look at the Open Beijing video that's up there. Um, and thank everybody and thank the questions. I know various questions are being answered privately by, by the team. Um, and as I mentioned, for more on China and other markets, um, we have the international business um, exchange in the summer and that it's always a real focus at the Children's Media Conference in July. We have that focus on strands and we will be looking at what we can do and doing more. You can go back to the CMC uh, YouTube channel and see things from last year and that will give you a, once again a flavour of what's what's on. Next, we have the CMC spring webinar, and that's going to be fac focused on maximizing the impact of your content on new platforms. Yes, we'll be exploring the metaverse. Um, what are kids up to on TikTok, Fortnite and Roblox, as well as Sort of, what are the more conventional platforms and the new platforms? We're going to be looking at ways of achieving how to successfully cut through with your content. It's produced by Lizzie Wingham and Alicia Foster, who specialise in social media strategies uh, with a bunch of really interesting stories to tell. I'm going to tell you not to miss it. I've got it in my diary. Please don't miss it. Um, it's an area that I need to brush up on. Um, it's on Friday, the 21st of May, and we're back to our usual time of 3 p.m. BST. Everybody welcome. And I will now say goodbye and thank you for coming.